Yes. Looks like it. All right. Hello, everyone. Faint by Nate here again. This week, we're going to do a couple of, I think one Bob Ross and one original, maybe. I'm not sure. Whatever you guys want to do. Uh, I think I'm just going to keep going with Bob Ross for now. This is 27 episode two, Angler's Haven. And I'm, I'm a little early today because of we're getting some storms in the area and I didn't want to be out, <laughs> out in my garage getting getting blown away by the storm so that's what I'm doing today uh, that's why it's early and yeah thanks again for joining me and let's get started all right so I'm using the I should tell you the colors first I'm using uh, Lucas Berlin's mostly two of the uh, what are these Windsor Newtons uh, I I'm just trying to get rid of old paints for now so this is uh, cadmium yellow hue uh, yellow ochre, bright red, or cadmium red light, naphthol red, all the same type of, type of thing. Titanium white, this is alizarin crimson, Prussian blue, French ultramarine, this is ivory black, sap green, I believe this is burnt sienna. Um, the, t the tube of paint I got of this is absolutely terrible, that's why it's like mushy, it looks like melted butter. And this is just raw umber there. The canvas. I've got two tones here already. This is just liquid white, which is half titanium white, half linseed oil. Bottom is linseed oil uh, base, but then on top of that I use the ivory black. That's why it's spread out there. So that's the two colors on the canvas already. Let's get actually started. So I'm going to use a two-inch brush here and French ultramarine. I use this in places. Thalo blue for now just because I had some I had a tube of the paint and I'm out of phthalo blue, so that's why I'm using French ultramarine here. Let's just put in the sky, I think. So I'll do X strokes here. Now you can do the sky a lot of different ways. Some people would like they tap, some people do X strokes. It's really just finding a way that you like and sticking with it. I like doing X strokes because it's simple. But however you want to do it really. Maybe I'll leave like a kind of a lighter spot here in the middle. Bring it down into this black color, the darker. And just blend that left and right. Yeah, Bob's doing, looks like he's doing the clouds with this tapping method. So if you just, like I was kind of mentioning earlier, if you tap with that, Looks kind of like clouds already. Then you can blend it out. See now it kind of looks like there's a cloud up here doing something. That's pretty cool. Might even look like a mountain a little bit. Oh, gotta get rid of that. I'm using Restream, so if there's a delay, it is uh, Restream's fault. And it is so annoying because it's just popping up stuff. Billy Kessinger. <laughs> Thanks for watching, man. I appreciate it. I, uh, glad you're watching both me and Bob. You can learn a lot from Bob. I don't know if you can learn much from me, but maybe you can. <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to put another cloud up here. Maybe up on this side. Kind of looks like a tree. But if you wanted it out, then it's a cloud. clean this brush off or just wipe it off a lot of times when I'm painting I don't clean the brushes at all but I'll just wipe them with the paper towel because when I'm using I'm using water mixed boils I don't know if I said that earlier but I'm using water mixed boils so when I wash those with water they tend to puff out and especially the natural bristle ones so I try not to wash them much when I'm painting bottom part out a little bit better. There. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to get my old palette knife here. We're going to use, what did Bob say? I'm just going to assume he said black and blue because we're doing mountains. Maybe some crimson. And the 
Bob Ross folks, they sell a mountain mix color. It's pretty good. It's a, it's basically that same thing, uh, black, blue, and crimson. But you don't have to mix it up. All right, we're gonna put a little mountain here. And when I do mountains, I just go up and down, kind of at random. I don't, I don't really think about it when I'm doing it. Probably should, but I don't. There we go. Nice little mountain there. Two inch brush. And pull down. Pull this one that way. Maybe this one comes over here. Comes out there. And blend out the bottom. There we go. Cool. that off on this little shop towel here. If my mic cuts out, let me know because I changed the batteries. I don't know if they were charged. Hopefully they were charged. My old uh, mic would, I just charge it by putting it in the, on a phone charger, but this new one, it takes actual batteries. All right, I'm mixing up some white and some blue. Maybe I'll get some more white on there, just a little bit of white. It's very strong. I do oils, watercolor, acrylics, spray paint. Oh wow, that's really cool. I tried acrylics a while ago. I wasn't very good at it, so I respect anyone who's good at acrylics. Especially spray paint stuff, that's cool too. When I was in school, they had, um, they call it the Freedom Tunnel, but it was just a, a tunnel that you could spray paint on. Anybody could go in there and do spray paint art. I think I only sprayed one thing. I forget what I spray painted even, but it was just, just like, uh, I forget what it was. But it was fun. A lot of people would do some crazy artwork in that tunnel with the spray paints. It was really cool. I'm just doing some highlights on this mountain here with this blue color. Nothing, nothing fancy here. Might use, let's see, I might use Prussian blue for the shadow and the rest of the dark black color. Maybe some mountain colors. There we go. That might be a good highlight color or shadow color, sorry. I get mixed up sometimes. And I'm just pulling down. Very gentle. And I have, I made a video how I highlight mountains a while back. So if anybody's curious, you can check that out. Alright, we're going to pull down on this side. Just pulling down. Hope I'm not blocking that. If I am, let me know. Sometimes I, I'll just take straight white after I've already put on two highlights and try and throw in some very bright highlights, but not not a ton of them, just a little bit here and there, just to kind of bring some of these inner colors out a little bit more. There we go. I'm gonna get another towel here, like this off. Oops. I don't think I'll be using this color anymore. So I'll wipe that one off too. There we go. And I'll probably just blend out the bottoms here. Just tap with a two inch brush. And this is to add half inch brush, sorry. And pull up. There we go. wiping out the color so I don't have to fully wash the brush yet. So I just don't I don't enjoy washing my brushes. Alright. 
And now what are we doing, Bob? Two inch brush. Mountain color. Some satin green. And I flip my brush over. I don't know if anyone else does that. But when I do this, when I pick color up, I do it on both sides. Because one thing when I started, I noticed is that I get streaks in my paint. And that's because I wasn't evenly distributing the paint in my brush. Might not be dark enough. Some black there. Green, sap green. Crimson. Prussian blue. A little bit of blue. Two and a half inch brush will cover. You can cover the whole canvas in about a second with it. It's very big. I might have too much oil down there at the bottom. Hope not. But I didn't. Normally, I wipe it off with a paper towel, but I forgot to do it. So I was in a hurry because we got like 30, 20, 30 minutes before these big storms start blowing through. I don't want to be in, out here when they pull through because they'll, they'll knock this house or the studio over. <laughs> it's not a very sturdy studio. All right, so we got big tree, big tree, mountains. It's interesting how the sky came out. I wasn't expecting it to look like that bright. But this should be okay. Don't look too bad. I'm gonna wipe this dark color off. So I'm assuming we're gonna do highlights here in a second. And I'm not sure what I want to paint after this. If anybody has suggestions, just let me know. As long as it's not a portrait, I can't do portraits yet. All right. It's got most of that dark color out of there. And then. I guess we're just grabbing straight Prussian blue. And then start at the bottom and go up. Not sure. I guess it's just to give it a bluish tint. I'm really scrubbing it very hard. I had to get some more linseed oil there for a second. Billy says, Bill always scared me how he painted the through, through the paint on the canvas. Bob gave me the ability to believe in myself. Love Bill's work. It's just tricky. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> he definitely throws the paint up there. Uh, Bill, Bill Alexander throws the paint up there. Bob's very good. Uh, He's good at inspiring you, make you believe that you can do it no matter what, which is always good. I just went to that mountain color with the script liner. My script liner's kind of falling apart. I need to get a new one. But I think they're out of stock still. They've been out of stock on these for a while. Everybody's out of stock of everything these days. I'm just adding in some, uh, just some kinds of branches. And one thing that I have tried to start doing is when I'm making branches, I'll try to connect the joints before I would just pull paint out of the branches wherever I thought it, the joint should be. But when I'm making these, you can kind of see, like there might be a joint here. That's where the paint kind of stuck and went down. And there's one up here, so I'll put a joint there. And it looks more natural, I've found, at least when I'm making branches before they just kind of look kind of weird and I always wondered why do my branches look so weird that was why 
You don't mean to put throw in there twice. Oh yeah, I I understood what you meant. No worries, no worries. All right, and this one I can wash off with the water because it does not puff out for whatever reason. So I just cleaned it up real quick. All right, now I gotta get all this dark color off of here because we're gonna do some highlights, and I only have one of these brushes. So if you if you can, I highly recommend getting two. I know they say in Bob's and Bill's videos, get two, two brushes, one for light, one for dark. And that's, that's a really good idea because, like, see, I haven't even added any color to this, and the yellow is already super dark, it's like a dark green. And I know when I go into that, it's going to get even darker. So I might add some white to it just to try and remedy that before I go in there. But it's the Hansa yellow. This is not actual cadmium nail, it's Hansa yellow, it gets dark very quickly. Alright, we're gonna, I'm just gonna start throwing in some highlights here. Just some little tiny, you can use the corner, or you can use a full, whatever, whatever you find works for you when highlighting. Sometimes I just hit cans at random. Probably not good. <laughs> Sometimes it works. I know they say not to do that, but I just do whatever when I'm painting. I don't. I don't like thinking about what I'm doing. yellow ochre here actually that got darker so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going with it since it got dark so, this is kind of empty in here so since I got dark color already on there I'll try and put it back here we go I've got a cousin now I learned from different artist tricks clean your spray on a cap or something and wash it in hot water so that's a good idea that's one thing I like about streaming is folks come in and they they drop these really useful hints or stuff they've learned when they, they when they've been painting. It's really nice. Learn a lot from other folks. And hope they learned something from me, but if not, at least they're here. I appreciate it. I'm just throwing in some bushy type colors here. All right, he's adding more mountain colors. So crimson, Prussian blue, some black, some green. Kind of just using the same color throughout. Whatever works. All right. Oh, he's making evergreen trees. I like making evergreen trees here. So I'm using a fan brush and that dark color I just mixed up. Mountain color plus some more green. All right, right here in the middle. A little tiny evergreen. He's just sitting there. Could have done that one before all this, but don't matter. Don't matter. And I like pushing the branches up because a lot of the trees where I live that's how they look. They're not the uh, droopy, I don't know, I don't want to call them droopy, but evergreens that kind of came down like this. We got longleaf pines here, and they're just very, very big, big leafy pine trees. And they always point up. Very nice trees. Yeah, I have vegetable oil and soap and warm water also clean brushes. I do have a mixture of that over here on the floor. I use that for my regular oil oil brushes. The only problem I've had, and I don't know how to fix this, is my my liquid white. I have, a, I have a specific brush that I use with my liquid white jar. That one, I could actually show you. It gets sticky, and I don't know, I don't know how to fix it, because it's like it's almost like it's got glue in here. There's like some type of nasty, sticky residue in, in, in the middle of the brush. But there's also oil in it, which is not 
I don't know, I might just need to get a new brush. But it only happens with my liquid white brush. None of my other brushes have this problem. And it's very, it's very annoying. I read somewhere that I might be able to fix it with vinegar, like white distilled vinegar cleaning it, but I'm not sure. I haven't tried it yet. All right, we're back here using some sienna in this color. Maybe a little bit more sienna. This sienna is terrible, terrible, terrible. The, the tube I got is just, it is no good. I'm just gonna tap here. Might not be able to see it on the screen. But I'm just tapping on this right in the middle where I think a burnt, uh, trunk would be. For that brush, try the oven cleaner. Okay, I'll, I'll give that a shot. That's a good idea. Because I really don't like buying new brushes. They're very expensive. And the older brushes, I find, they work. They tend to have like a different shape and I like the way they work more than new brushes, if that makes sense. Like they're broken in, kind of. All right, I'm just grabbing some yellow ochre here and some green. I wanna make a dark green here. Just dial like these. There we go. Flip the brush over, flip it back, whatever works. Pushing in the same way I was making those ones. All right, done with that. You love this painting. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's coming out pretty good. I'm, uh, I'm actually I like reusing colors a lot too. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I don't like I don't like wasting colors that I've already put up here. So he's putting in like a yeah, it looks like a bank here. So I'm gonna put in a little bank. going right into the middle, up here. And then I'll wipe this off and use this dark green, dark green color. Maybe I can highlight that a little bit. Look like moss maybe. This is the same pressure that I used up on those highlights, so that's what it should look about the same. Throw that up there. And we're gonna grab this. Go into some yellow. Got that dark color already on there. I'm gonna kind of bring this down into here. Just kind of bring these two areas together. I think that all should work. I might highlight these with a lighter color later, but not yet. All right, now what are we doing? I'm gonna wipe this, wipe this uh, pan brush out. It's got too much paint in it. Oh, I don't want to waste it though. Eh, that's okay. It's too muddy. It happens from time to time. I don't either like wasting colors because you don't want too much on the palette, but also at the same time, not too little. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You gotta have that perfect balance. I gotta wipe this one out again. Really need to get a second one. I used to have two of them, but one of them got, uh, I think I lost it at the, I took a class and I left it there. It's sad because these, these two and a half inch brushes, you can't even find them anymore. The Alexander folks don't have them in stock. They haven't had them for a couple months now, maybe longer. All right. I need to take this, hopefully not too green brush. Get some white here. Titanium white, as Bill Alexander says. It is a little tinted, but that's okay. Where's the light? I want the light to be over here. I'll pull it down. Ooh, that looks nice with that blue. That blue that we put down earlier. All right, and I don't want to put more white in there because then I'll start to smear because I already know I've got too much oil on here down here at the bottom you know, now I'll just pull left to right and then on 
problems. This side I'm pointing left to well, this was right to left. This this is left to right, sorry. I get my directions mixed up a lot when I'm painting. Or when I'm streaming. Alright. And I'm gonna grab some more of this white color. And this titanium white is actually very thick. The other one I have not very thick. fix oil paints I found. I never got myself into a pickle that I can fix with oil paints. I have with gouache paints. I tried gouache one time. I got my sky ended up looking terrible. Oh Bob's already done. I gotta add a little bank here. The thing with the mountains when Bill painted he just used a palette knife and he still had the paint break, he didn't use the brush. That's something I can't figure out. Yeah, yeah, Bill did them a lot different. And he, I th one, one kind of way that I've kind of gotten his effect is that I did, like the way I do highlights is the same way that I do Bill Mountains every layer. So the furthest back layer, I do the, the breaking. In front of that, I do the breaking. And then the, the top layer, I do the breaking. So and it looks kind of like his, but still, he had, he had like 50 or some years of practice. So he was a legend. He, he invented this, I guess. All right. I got to figure out what color B Bill or Bob just used here. I think it was this this color with some white. That might be too much. I'll just use all of it. Yeah, something like this. And then he used this brush. I'm using my Trilon brush here for this. Throw it in. Looks kind of like rocks, but not quite. And then on top of this, I'm gonna throw in some green. Maybe I don't know. Whatever works. Maybe like a little meadow or something. I kind of want that to be a little bit brighter because it doesn't stick out enough. a little bit. I don't want too much. There we go. All right, what else do we need? I think that was it. I believe that was all Bob had here. So I'm going to wipe this off. Maybe blend out some stuff up here. Just a little bit more. There we go. There we go. All right, wipe that off. I'm trying to think. Oh, I need to sign it. I always forget to sign when I'm doing the streams too. <laughs> oh well. I don't know. I feel like I want to add a bush or a rock somewhere. All your oil supplies are paint are packed up. Oh yeah, I know how that is. If I didn't have this space, they'd all be in a, in a box in my garage downstairs. Alright, I'm going to do one little thing. I'm going to go into my liquid white, which is just oil and white. This orange color. I'm going to add some like some little highlights here in the middle. Just to cover up that rock there. Some of these. There we go. Maybe I want some down there. Oh, in the corner, he's hanging out. Is that good enough? One there, one there, maybe one there. Okay. That was a lot of effort for no real effect, but I think it was a little better. All right, I'm gonna wipe this out. I'm pretty much. I think I'm done with this painting for now. Might touch it up later, but we'll see. I usually don't touch up my paintings after I'm done with them. 
They just sit in a pile. Like I got paintings out. I don't think any of them are showing in the stream, but they're just all over. That's beautiful. Thanks, Billy. Much appreciated. All right, wipe this guy off. I don't know what I'm gonna paint next. Maybe a, maybe like British Columbia gorge or something. Need to sign it. Almost forgot. Every time. For that, script liner, linseed oil, bright red. Just shake the brush around. I'll put it down here. This isn't the focal point of the painting anyway. Try to make my signature as subtle as possible. There we go. Spin that around. I can hear the thunder outside, so I might not have enough time for this next one. But we'll try. We can do a speed painting. <laughs> Alright. Let's tape her down see how we did. It's hard to see from when you're far away. But there we go. That's it. This is my version of Bob Ross Season 27, Episode 2. Angler's Haven, I believe it's called. Cool. Alright, I'm gonna clean I'm gonna clean the brushes, get my other canvas repped and ready to go, clean the palette, and then I'll be back. And like usually takes five, ten minutes, so I'll cue the uh, the nice guitar music for you. Here we go.
All right, I think we're back. Still haven't figured out what exactly I'm gonna paint, but I got my canvas up here, plain, 16 by 20. I got my palette, pretty much the same colors as last time. Uh, I don't think I changed any of them actually. I just added some more of the Prussian blue, ochre, and white. Everything else is the same. So yeah, I guess we're just gonna I'm just gonna paint something. <laughs> Something random, something to, I don't know, brighten the day a little bit. So, I haven't, I haven't coated this. It's a, it's a dry canvas, so I'm going to use my titanium white and linseed oil mixture here. This is how I coat it. Uh, nothing fancy. I just tap, kind of in a, in a grid pattern, all over it. And then once I got it relatively covered, I just blend it out with circles and X strokes, whatever gets it in between the weaves. That's the main, the main goal here is to get the oil and the white into the weaves of the canvas. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what I want to paint. I kind of want, let's think about this, what do we want? We will do a nice sunset. Sunset over here, maybe right here. Sunset over here. That's where my light will be coming from. Maybe a cliff, cliff over here. Very small tree line down here. I don't know. What type of canvas do you use, buddy? I use, these are Sunbelt canvases. They are double primed and side stapled. So, um, yeah, they're, they're made, I think, in Texas. They work really well. They're pretty tight canvases. I haven't had any, no problems with the canvas itself. I like double primed a little bit more than the, I used to use, I have some over there, but they're wrapped up uh, quadruple prime canvases. But I found these ones hold the paint a little bit, slightly better. And uh, it doesn't, uh, what's the word? smear around. I think that's the word. It'll, on the quadruple ones, the paint didn't soak in at all, so I didn't get a, it was hard to remove paint. Like, I used to be, I was in like a Kevin Hill painting phase where all I would do is Kevin Hill paintings, and when you take away the paint, uh, you weren't left with anything because it's quadruple prime ones didn't soak up hard any of it. But with these ones, if I take away paint, it'll, It'll still be in the canvas, which is nice. All right, I'm just gonna wipe this off in the water. Might drop it in, in some heavy oil here later. All right, check that out. And one thing I like to do after I've already gone over the canvas is uh, just kind of wipe it off with a towel. And I even use, I'll use a wet one, which I know is probably not good, but this gets out like any globs. If I had a glob of paint somewhere, it would do it out. Cool. All right. Now to the sky. Let's do a sky. Let's do a nice big sky. Maybe, where did we say it was going to be? Over here. Let's do that. Two inch brush, maybe. Let's use a two inch brush. And I will actually use Let's see, I might use some yellow and some bright red. A little bit more bright red. Make an orange. This is peach. Peach if you add white. So this is like a yellow, cad yellow, red, and white color here. I'm going to throw it in over here. That's where my sunshine will be. Right there. All right. That's enough. And we'll go around that. Let's use some crimson here to that peach color. I don't know what color that is. Crimson and peach. Let's go around that towards the bottom. And you pull in from the side. And I'll get another brush to blend that out later. And we'll throw in 
some blue. This is ultramarine blue, not phthalo blue, like most people painting along with Bob use. We'll start up in this top right corner and then work left. That's an interesting color. Looks like it might add some green down there at the bottom. <laughs> That's okay. I don't care too much about the color of the way. Getting green in my sky, some people care. I've been sick, starting to feel better. Just watching other artists do art truly helps me. That's good to hear. Glad you're feeling a little bit better too. I know one of my buddies, he got sick. He's had COVID for a while. But he just got negative tests, so he's been out, out and about. I'm just cleaning this brush off. And this is a try one brush, two inch try one brush. I use those for the base usually because they they can clean up with water and not flay out, which is nice. Here we go. All right, let's take this hopefully clean two and a half inch brush. I'm gonna try and blend out the corners, the edges. Make it look like a fried egg. And I don't really care about this area here because it, I'm just gonna cover all that up. All right, so we did that, we did that. Let's add in some clouds, I guess. Could use some clouds. Some blue, maybe. Some crimson, you know, purple, is that purple? Lavender, lavender if we add white. That's not lavender. Maybe it is, I have no idea. Wish I could see colors better. All right, what do we want to do? Let's start down here. This is just the fan brush going back and forth, applying more pressure as we go up. Just random directions, random motions. And again, I say I don't care about that spot, so I'm not going to focus on it. I'm just going back left and right in between, kind of blend the colors together. There we go, there we go. Something like that. Let me blend this out more towards the bottom. It goes off into nothing. Something like that. There we go. Grab our two inch brush again, two and a half inch brush there. I'm just going to go over that bottom part a little bit. Alright, wipe this off. There's no, there might be some green left in there, but that's okay. There we go. I'm just going left to right, kind of. I don't want them to be too harsh. There we go. Alright, we got an egg, and we got... A smokestack coming out of the egg. That's fine. Maybe we should put a sun. Wanna put a sun in here? Let's put a sun in. I can use my finger, but I don't like I don't like getting paint on my hands. I don't know why. It's not a messy thing, I just don't. I don't know what's in it, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get sick from painting. Alright, where do we want to? right there. And this is an Egbert brush and I'm just going in a circle with it. Kind of like kind of like this. You can use a one inch brush and spin it around. It'll have the same effect. Kind of. Probably be more straight with a one inch brush. Alright. Where did my big palette knife go? We're going to scoop up the extra paint. So we don't want all that white paint there. Go back to the old two and a half inch brush. Go left, left to right, right to left. Make it look kind of hazy. That's nice, I like that. Hazy day. And then I'll use some of this orangey color. Maybe some more white. Maybe some of the red too, I don't know. 
just going to go back over some spots here. Not all of it, just somewhere I want the paint to hit, or the light to hit, not the paint to hit. Oh, the paint hits everywhere. And some very far up here. There we go. Let's brush again. There we go. That's a sky. And then maybe I'll put a tree. There's a tree up there for, for any reason. You don't need a reason to put a tree in. Alright, wipe this fan brush off. And I have two fan brushes. I don't know why I'm cleaning this one off, but just force of habit, maybe. I'll wipe the Egbert brush off. And this is a, what brand is this? Robert Simmons Egbert. It's a nice little fan brush. If you guys have any recommendations for fan or Egbert brushes, let me know. I'm, I'm always looking to try new ones. All right, we got a little sky. We got some clouds, the sun. Let's add in some little. I don't want to do full blown mountains. I don't want to do. I don't want to do those. I want to do. What do we want to do? Let's see. I want like a just a small subset of mountains, not foothills. I'm not sure how to explain it. It's going to use a lot of white here. Different values of blue. Let's see. There we go. Let's start with the furthest away one. And maybe he's all the way back here. Something like this. One mountain very far away. We'll have an even bigger one in front. But he, this one's just... And hanging out in the back. I'm gonna go grab some more blue, make it a little bit darker. And then we're gonna go on this other side here, throw one in, throw one in front. It doesn't have to go all the way, because we can add layers here. We can add layers. So I'm gonna add some more blue. Should look slightly darker. I know it's going to be very subtle. Might not be able to see it. So this is a darker blue than the one I threw in there. There should be a little, little variation in tone. And then I just added some ivory black to that blue. So this should be, I think, the equivalent of midnight black in Bob's uh, color line. And we're just going to throw this one out. He's going to be out here. Covering up that peachy color there. It's okay. Maybe it comes down. Get into that white color. There's something. So we got three, four mountains there. And let's add. Let's add. What do we want to add? I guess we could add. I'll use the palette knife here. these be in the shadow they would be in the shadow so these are in the shadow so I'm going to be adding in, I want to add in water lines but if they're in the shadow they need to be what's the term cool cooled off cool colors because they're not in direct sunlight or they're not they are not direct sunlight if that makes sense Those ones look okay. I'm gonna need to add some dark color here towards the bottom. Just a bunch of cool colors. Let's see, let's pull left to right. I'm just gonna throw it all the way across the bottom here. This is like a river I made. Lake? I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff up here. Nothing specific. This is not planned. It's not drawing. None of that. Just just random random painting. If you watched iCarly. Not that I'm a grown man who still watches iCarly. <laughs> uh, so now that I've got that base color and I can put this back here as well. There we go. 
That's all I needed. You got to do the base color first. If you're painting along, make sure you do the base color beforehand. All right. So now we got that big old mountain there. Or mountains, plural. We got the water. I'm gonna pull this left to right, make it look more, I don't know, wispy, less defined. I don't know what the word is. Cool. And then I guess we can start adding in a giant. Oh, do we want to add in a giant mountain here? Maybe, maybe, maybe we do. I know I said it was gonna be a giant mountain. I didn't think. Yeah, let's just let's just go big. <laughs> And he's gonna cover up all of this. Not all of it, but a good chunk of it. I'm just blocking in color with the fan brush here. I don't know. I don't know if we want to go all the way down. Probably not. Oh no, there's white in there. Oh no, it's ruined. It's not ruined. Never say your painting is ruined. Because it's not. Even if you completely mess up what you wanted to do, you can always scrape off the paint. Throw some color back in. Start over. Very easy. Very easy. It'll make you sad that you used all that paint, but it's not ruined. Alright, <laughs> I got a giant cliff in here. Look at that. Alright. What do we want to do? I kind of want to put some land in there first before I go too crazy with this cliff. Let's do that. I know if I go too too deep, it's gonna. Alright. Looking at a very dark green here with cad yellow and ultramarine. And this one might actually, some of it might actually be in the sun. Not all of it. Just putting in random splotches of land. Not thinking too much about placement yet. Just kind of random, random splotches. Random splotches of color. It might look more like a green water than anything else. But we can add details later. What's the word blobs? Why we'll blobs in first? These are gonna look like little tiny trees out here. Should just look like random trees. Random trees and land. I kind of want these ones over here to be a little bit darker. There's gonna be like maybe a maybe a strand of light there in the middle. I saw a video on here of Kevin Hill, it's crazy, he painted on a very small canvas board, had it taped to the easel. Yeah, he, that's his like, his demo, his demo kit has a, a wooden, I actually have one, I could show you real quick. It's a little, uh, uh, let's grab it. Yeah, it's like one of these, a little tiny, uh, I don't know if that shows up, but it's a little tiny canvas board type thing. Because I actually got that kit after I saw that video because it was very interesting. And then I took one of his classes back in August last year. Very helpful, but very hard. Very hard painting style. 
for beginners at least. I, I still consider myself a beginner. So. He's very he's very talented. He's been painting 15 years. Or I think he said 15. I've only been doing this for one and a, <laughs> one and a half. So I got some time. Maybe. Alright, so I added in some like tree shapes here. I'm just gonna mash them in, make them I don't want any detail down here. This would be like you're standing on a cliff next to this giant cliff. I don't know. You can't really see down the land too much down there. All right, now we got that in. We can go big. I'm gonna do brown. I'm gonna put a cliff in front of a cliff in front of a cliff. <laughs> this is crazy. I've never painted anything like this before. Most of this is just the fan brush too. I'm not using that. I'm not using much, as much as far as brushes go here. Just throwing in color. I'm gonna throw. I might throw in some black color here because that might not be not be enough as far as details go, or definition. I think is the word. There we go. Got a couple of cliffs here. I'm gonna firm him up just a little bit more. Pull him down with the fan brush. Just gives it some shape. This is giving me some ideas on what to paint. I have some acrylics. I'm really liking this. That's good to hear. If you do it with acrylics, let me know. I've never I've used them a couple times and I always struggle. But maybe one day I'll I'll watch a good video from somebody and they'll show me the ways. <laughs> I know Kevin Hill has some. He's um he does acrylics or what does he call it? Mixed mixed media, I think is the word he said. Now I'm just adding some shapes to this uh cliff here. Nothing nothing definite though. I don't want I don't want details on this one. I just want this to be like Somewhere you might be able to hike, but haven't hiked yet. I'm pulling down the fan brush. Make it look steeper, steep, steep mountain. How does that look? Maybe I want this to be a little bit darker, so I pull it, pull it down, pull it away. It makes it darker. All right. So that's something. We definitely got something here. Is it good? I'm not sure. <laughs> Again, this was not planned. I just, I just wanted to paint something. All right, let's go back into this white. And now I'm gonna. I don't want this to be super bright though. I'm gonna try and get this red or yellow, yellow color. I want to make it look like it's hitting this this edge here. Just a little bit on spots. Nothing. Nothing too detailed. This is somewhere you could hike. Maybe that's what I'll call this painting. Somewhere you could hike. <laughs> we don't have many big rocks like this where I live. Um, most of what we've got around here are little tiny hills. I'm just tapping. If I had a, I don't know, a flat brush. If I had a flat brush, that, that would probably help out a good bit. You know, um, Robert Warren, he does paintings on the Alexander art, or he used to. He did flat brush stuff all the time. All the, all the time. Alright, maybe I'll grab the two and a half inch brush. Sunset landscape. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're going for. I'm gonna take the two inch brush because I just want the edges here. I don't I don't want detail on this blue mountain. Or is this blue? I can't tell. I don't want details on that one. I kinda want a little tiny bit on this one, not too much. Alright. And the last thing we're gonna do, we got that weird color up in the corner I want to get rid of. And how do we get rid of colors we don't like in paintings? As Bob says, trees cover a multitude of sins. 
So we're just gonna take the fan brush. I don't know if you've seen someone paint a tree like this, but this is how I like painting trees quickly with the fan brush. <laughs> just, <laughs> just tap, tap in. Kind of holding it like this and pop, 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 pop. If you play drums, it's kind of like traditional grip, but with my off hand, my right hand. This is just the dark background color. Once I got a good dark color in there, I'll throw in some nice highlight colors. It might not be dark enough though. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. This is just raw umber, sap green, and ivory black. That's what I'm using here. I do wet on wet for acrylic. This is gonna sound funny, but I also learned this from another artist, shampoo. <laughs> I use shampoo, you can use it for glaze. That's really cool. I didn't know you could use shampoo for that. That's really cool. I need this to be darker up here. Because that's going to be in the back. I'm just smacking it with the fan brush now. There we go. Now it looks like there's a something hanging out here. bad and then we'll go into this white and yellow ochre color this is very like red red orange tones here I think I hope that's red I have no idea now we're just gonna try and tap tap in clumps I think I saw Robert Warren painting like this. He's really good. He's on he's on Alexander Art. Alexander Art has a uh, subscription. You pay thirty dollars a month, and you get access to all of their videos. And it's a really good deal, kind of like Netflix, but for <laughs> for artists. There we go. I might need some yellow. I feel like I need some you know, bright green. I guess I have sap green and white. I can do that. That might help. I want there to be more greens in the middle. Let's do that. I'm just gonna go into white and tap green. Maybe that's what I'll want. Oh yeah, there we go. Mint green, I think is the word. All right, I'm just gonna throw this in between. I'm just gonna try and make it look like a tree, less like a explosion. If that makes sense. Uh, there we go. Maybe we can cover up the corner there. I think maybe what if we do like absolute white. This might not work, but it might work. It'll either work or it won't work. Those are our options. Just on the very edges. I'm just tapping with the just with the corner of the fan brush. I want to give it more shapes. And this is the last highlight that I'll do. I like having shapes. Shapes in my trees. <laughs> there we go. All right. Ow. Just stubbed my toe. It's starting to rain here. So I think with that, I'm going to sign it, bring it down, have a look. I have no idea how it turned out. Again, this was just a random painting. Painting that we did. Sunset landscape, as Billy calls it. I might call it that. All right. I'm just going to wipe these off real quick. And then grab our old, old reliable script liner brush. I still have oil on there from the last painting. I never, never cleaned up this section because again, I don't like wasting paint. I'm gonna throw in 
Where should the signature go? Mm, we'll throw it in over here. I don't want to put it over there just because there's not much, not much space. And I might actually touch this one up later, but probably not. I think it's good as is. Two two. All right, rinse that guy off here. Tap it and pull the paint out. I used to play drums. I struggled trying to get to do the drum solo, Moby Dick, Led Zeppelin. Oh, John Bottom, yeah. Nice, Rick Roach. Classics. I tried playing Buddy Rich when I was a kid, but I was never good enough. Well, I wouldn't say I wasn't good enough. I just didn't practice enough. I think that's the key. All right, let's see how we did. Let's see how we did here. All right, we got our, our cliff with some rocks. If I could line this up. There we go. There we go. Not too bad, not too bad. Random painting by me. Paint by Nate. Thanks everybody. Thanks Billy for joining me today. Thanks for the folks on Twitch chat. I'll probably be around next week. I'll split these up into videos like I always do. But yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks again, Billy. I love it. I love seeing you guys in the chat talking. And yeah, I'll see you next week. Maybe, maybe the week after. But thank you.